What UTV should you buy? A Razor or a Can-Am Commander? We'll show you what kind of upgrades you can do to both, and then you can decide. It's all coming up today on Truck U. Welcome to Truck U. Today we're going to have some fun with these. These are some really cool toys. You know, we see a lot of you guys out on the road all over the country, and it seems like so many people have these. These are little side by sides that you got. This is the Polaris Razor, the all new Can Am Commander. Each one has its advantages and disadvantages. We wanted to take them out, have a little bit of fun with them, and see what we thought about it. Yeah, so we, you know, we did that. We took them out on the trails. We wanted to compare side by side which one, you know, excels in one area and which one kind of lags behind a little bit. No pun intended. No pun intended. <laughs> the first thing we found was the Razor was so much lighter and more agile going through turns. You know, it went across the whoops, it kind of skated right across. When you hit a turn, this thing really seemed to plant and dig. Now, it is a lot lighter. It's about 200 pounds lighter versus the Commander, and it's got less horsepower. We're talking 50 to 83. But the Commander in those turns, I mean, it just seemed really top heavy. And actually, we rolled it, got through one of them. Right. In the same turn, the Razor just plowed right through. So there's a, a big issue we need to address, and that's trying to get that thing to handle through the turns and through the whoops like the Razor. So attack that. What we're going to do is mess with the suspension. But I tell you what, going from point A to point B on flat ground, that thing just smoked. True. That True. thing took off like a rocket. It's been fun to watch these things evolve over the last couple of years. You're going back to the old mules and the rhinos when they really were used for utility with the dump beds. Not a lot of utility going on with these. This is all about fun. So yeah, man, let's rip it up. Fortunately, in the aftermarket world, there's about a million and one different products available for these things. Too. Maybe get some nitrous on them or a blower. They have that. Nice. So first thing we gotta do is get the old suspension out of the way. And we happen to find a little bit of an aftermarket fix was done to this thing. You can see right here is the original shock mount was much farther in. They moved it out about three inches. And that fix obviously didn't really fix a whole lot because we still had problems. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna fix it the right way and really make this thing handle well out in the trails. So we've got our new suspension kit from FST. And I really, what I'd like to do is just kind of break it down and make it real simple if I can for just a second. Let's get this out of here. Now, think about the body of this commander as a table, right? So the shocks are the legs of the table as they currently look right there. What we're going to do is relocate the shocks. We're going to move them out, we're going to move them forward, and we're going to move it all up. Now, what that's going to do is basically we're moving the legs of the table out closer to the corners. It's making it a lot more stable. Then when we relocate that bracket up, we're dropping the center of gravity of the body of this thing too, and it's gonna make things a lot more stable. So we got a lot going on too. Yeah, this thing becomes very top heavy very easily. So what we're gonna do is we're moving the center of gravity down, we're making it a longer wheelbase essentially, and we're actually gonna be able to take advantage of the shocks. Now that's a key component to this kit we got from FST. We're using a dual rate shock that's gonna give us the best of both worlds in both performance and comfort. But we're also able to use it by standing it straight up. We're not disadvantaging the shock like you do when you lay it over. Right. So now we're going to get the full rate of the shock to make a much better ride. Now the good news is by being able to use the suspension to its full capacity, we can now start using the engine to its full capacity as well. I like that's it. when the fun picks up, right? Absolutely, buddy. You need a hand? So we're pretty happy and we're pretty comfortable with the way that the Razor is, but with anything else, there's always room for improvement. One of the spots that has some major room for improvement is right down here on the stock hubs all the way around. See, so think about it. The tire is spinning. It's going this way. As you're jumping up in the air and you're landing sideways or you're kicking this thing left to right, all that stress is on the hub right there, and it's all right there. This is made of cast aluminum from the factory. What's happening with these is people go with a more aggressive or a bigger tire and they punish these vehicles. This is breaking right here. This collar is checking out. At that point, when that happens, the only thing you have hanging on is the caliper, and that's not going to hang on for too long. All right, so we take these out, and that problem is solved with this. It's another, another piece that we got from the guys at FST. This is 7075 billet aluminum. 7075 aluminum is the strongest aluminum you can get, so you don't have to worry about it breaking. So this is going to be a serious upgrade for any kind of aftermarket tires that we want to put on here. 
That brings us over here to this sweet looking combination here that we got from ITP. This is the Blackwater Evolution tire and the SS212 wheel. What's nice about this, when you look at this tire, it's very aggressive. And let's talk about the tread to void ratio. And what that is, it's the ratio of empty space right here to tread right here. That's got a big bite in it. So whether you're going through dirt, sand, mud, whatever, this is getting down to the bottom of it. It's chewing through and it's getting you home. That's exactly what you want in a tire. It's also got some strong sidewall armor right in here on the inside, eight ply. That's gonna have puncture and abuse resistance right there. So no matter what you're hitting, it's jamming up on the side of the tires, this tire is gonna take it. It's also got a rim guard when you look down here all the way around, if you get up close like I am, you can see it's raised up over the rim so that offers another level of protection. Let's talk about the wheel, the SS212. We've got the black finish right here. Actually comes in four different finishes. You can get the black like we've got. You get the black with the machined face. You can get a chrome or a platinum. They all look fantastic. And another cool thing is they all come with a clear coat on them. So keeping them clean is nice and easy. ITP also kicks it in with a lifetime structural warranty. So if you break one of these or bend it, you call the guys and they send you another one. I plan on testing that warranty here later on today. Welcome back to Truck U. So we've got the shock hung in place, the arms are in place, the spindle's ready to go. We just gotta get that axle back in, then we can button all this back up together. Here's another cool part about this kit. It's all about adjustability and fine tuning. You can fine tune every element of this kit. Good thing is no matter where you live, no matter what the elements are that you're gonna be putting this through, you can adjust it accordingly. Like ride height, for example, right here, you've got about three inches of travel. You can just run this black nut down here on the threads on the shock right there. So if you're out west where it's dry and you're just jumping, you wanna keep it low and tight for the turns. If you're over in the east and maybe you're running through a little bit more water and you need it to be a little bit higher, a little bit more ground clearance, you can do that. So like we said with this kit, it's all about fine tuning and you can adjust just about every part of it. Anytime you can bolt on performance, I am always down, and that's exactly what we're gonna do right here is by putting a new high full exhaust system in from HMF. Now this is their dual slip on exhaust system, and it's gonna give us improved airflow, which is gonna give us better horsepower and better torque. Now also, you gotta say, these things look really good. You get the cans that are color matched and the end caps for your vehicle. There's different options you can go with. They come with the spark arresters, which you can put in the backside, so you're driving this thing through the woods. It's a nice safety feature to have. Best part about it too is this thing's gonna sound awesome. I think Matt's really gonna dig the sound of this. So it's gonna look good, it's gonna perform good, and it's gonna sound good. Matt, Yo. you're about ready to fire this thing up? I'm hanging out, brother, I'm ready. You All can right, win. flip the switch here, hold on one second. And I think you're gonna like this. All right, dude. Huh? Not bad, dude. Pretty cool. It sounds mean. Yeah. You know? Brody. Yeah. All right, kill it. As far as the suspension goes in the rear of this, we've got a lot of the same issues that we had up front, mainly shock position. If you take a look at this right here, it's right in the middle of what would be the driver's back. So again, they're mounted kind of narrow. So you've got all of this weight, especially if there's two people in there and you're doing a lot of turning, all this weight is just swinging back and forth and it's sitting at a very disadvantaged position in the stock configuration. So what we want to do is move that. And it really all goes back to that kind of table comparison that we made up on the front. Now, it's a similar scenario in the back, but it's probably worse. At least in the front, they were closer to the end of the table. In the back, it's almost like you've got a front leg, you've got a middle leg, but no back leg, because by the time you get done with the bed, you're all the way back here. So this is gonna be a big improvement. So here is what we're going to do. Very similar to the front. We're gonna take the shock mount location, we're gonna move it out to the exterior of the vehicle and further to the back, and it's gonna be straight up and down. That's gonna be a lot more advantageous right there, and it's gonna make the control a lot better. Now, another thing we've got here is I want to show you in the original configuration from the factory is you've got this swing arm suspension, which allows for travel up and down, which is great if you're going for a straight line. But as we've seen out on the trail, when you go to turn, it's not doing you a whole <laughs> lot of good because basically you've got this big lever on this diagonal, which is giving you a ton of mechanical advantage. So when it hits a turn, basically you're putting the back end of the vehicle and you're making it light, which ends up you being on your side obviously not what we're looking for. Okay, so what we're gonna do is go from the swing arm suspension, that's gonna go and we're going to this double wishbone style configuration. And what that's gonna do is bring roll center back into the vehicle. And what 
I mean when I say roll center is the fact that it's going to be, be a lot better for control because as these arms go up and down, the way that this thing is engineered, as far as the geometry goes, it adjusts the camber of the tire. So let's say you're, you're going in and you hit a real hard turn, right? And you turn this way, what it's going to do is the, the camber is going to be adjusted to where the tires are going to roll out this direction. You go the other way and they're going to roll out this direction a little bit. And what it does is the idea is to keep the biggest possible footprint of the tire on the ground at all times. Even when you're in those sharp turns, you're going to have full traction, better control, and it's just overall better ride quality. Yeah, and the other thing that you want to talk about too is the shocks. Once again, in the back, you know, you've got this big disadvantage. Look at this angle. The more you lay them down, the less shock you're using. So by standing it back up, we can once again use that complete rate of that shock to get proper dampening going down the road. And I can tell you something, out on the trails, this thing's going to be like a Baja vehicle. It it's going to be mean. This is. <laughs> Let's go inside the Duplicolor garage. Duplicolor. Yes, you can in your garage. Not too long ago, Duplicolor introduced the shadow chrome blackout coating for wheels and it revolutionized what you could do to chrome wheels and how you could accent them and customize them to your own particular needs. Now this is the next step. It's the copper plate coating. If you were out at SEMA like we were last year, you would have seen a lot of these copper looking or copper accented wheels. They were all over the place and they looked fantastic. Now if you want to go that direction, of course, you've got a couple of different options. One, you can buy a set of those wheels and spend a good amount of money or two, for a fraction of the cost, about 20 bucks, you can use the copper plate coating system and do that job yourself. The copper plate is a translucent paint. You can see through it, so we don't want to scuff up that chrome. You'll see all the scuffs, and that's a mess. The good news is there's a built in adhesion promoter in the copper plate system, so we don't need to scuff it up anyway. Next, we laid on just a couple of thin coats and you can really see the color start taking shape. Now, one of the cool things about the shadow and the copper plate system both is you can go on a little bit and just make it lightly changed or just keep laying on more and more thin coats and go as dark as you want. Once we get the color where we want it, we'll go to step two, which is the clear coat. And that's going to do two things. One, it gives us the glossy finish that we want. And two, it offers some protection against road debris. Take a look at this. The big reveal looks awesome. Once we get all that tape and everything out of here, real nice. Again, it's a two-can system that goes on nice and easy. This is something you can do at your own house and at a fraction of the cost of copper plating. It's just another way that guys at Duplicolor are helping you restore, restyle, and protect your vehicle in your garage. For all the information you need about this and all the Duplicolor products, be sure to check out their website. Welcome back. Now we're still doing our FST suspension upgrades on our Commander, but one thing we want to do too is make sure we do some regular maintenance on this thing. You know, this thing's been run pretty hard and it's taken a beating, so you want to make sure you get out to the trails, you can actually have fun, you don't get stuck. One of the easy things we can check is the CVT belt. All you've got to do is you run in this adjuster right here, it'll loosen up the belt, take the tension off it, and you should be able to pull this off and see what we got to work with. All right, so here we go. Now we can take a better look and I think we've got a problem here. Either this guy's got some kind of specialty belt or there's a definite issue. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's a specialty. It's got a specialty groove all the way around the inside and that's not supposed to be there. It looks like it was machined, which, well, I guess it kind of was, but yeah. again, that should not be there. You know, we see that from time to time on these commanders and the good news is it's a pretty easy fix, especially now that you have it apart. And if we replace this belt now, it's going to save us potentially from some what could be very expensive headaches in the future. Now, we'll show you guys what's going on here. And this is a typical thing we're having with the commanders. And what it goes down to is the fact that there's a lot of heat because of where the exhaust is and the environment you're running this thing into. And it causes a bit of an issue with the clutch. So here's how the clutch on this thing works. So when you step on the throttle, the clutch engages like this through centrifugal force and the fingers pushing it out. As it's doing that and grabbing, it grabs onto the belt, drives the wheels, and all is good. The problem happens when you lift off the throttle. You see this little bearing or this little bushing right here? That grabs and that's not good. Yeah, you were talking about just kind of the junk that gets in there and that can kind of bind that bearing right there and then it pulls it out and you get that little space right there. Then the belt rides on that and it cuts that groove into the belt. So if you pull the clutch apart, you can see that inside of here there's a bearing race and that's where the issue happens. So you take this thing apart, you look at it, make sure there's no galling, no dirt, debris in here and everything should be fine because the end result besides a bad belt could end up to be that. Yeah, this is an extreme case of some bad things going down, right? Because the belt 
it, it just deteriorates over time. The cords become exposed. They start whipping around and chewing into the clutch. Now, besides just cleaning it or replacing a belt, now you got to replace a whole clutch. Like I said, that can be a lot more expensive. Yeah, I'll tell you, it's not going to be fun having this thing disintegrate sitting alongside of you. I'll tell you, that's for sure. Not at all, but we've got the new belts right here from Gates. This will slide right in there. They're approved by the original equipment manufacturers, so that's good to go. And they're easy to find. You don't have to go on a wild goose chase because all the major automotive retailers have them. You can find them at your power sports dealers. They're right there. Yeah, it's the Gates G4 CVT belt. What's great about them is they're laser measured to be a dimensionally exact to OE. And what that means for Matt and I is the fact that they're going to go in easy yep. and they're going to fit perfectly. So that's great. We spent a lot of time overhauling our Commander, but we also want to spend a little bit of time optimizing our Razor. And the way we're going to do that is by adding the DynoJet Power Commander 5 fuel injection module. What this is going to do is give us precise control of both fuel and ignition. There's a lot of bells and whistles that go along with this thing. One of the fun things is you can rev the rev limiter on this thing. You can jump it way up so you can get this thing to spin a little higher. By adding the optional DynoJet Auto Tune, it gives us a bunch of capabilities to actually shift on the fly in terms of air fuel ratio. So what we'll do is install wideband O2 sensors on both sides of the engine in each cylinder. These will go into the exhaust, and as you're driving, you're actually reading the air fuel mixture as you're going down the road, down the trails, and it's actually adjusting it to optimize it going down the road, which is really cool. Let's say you're up in the mountains in Denver, Colorado. You've got no air, no oxygen. It'll lean it out to make this thing run more efficiently, and it gives us the capabilities of optimizing our combination. Oil is the lifeblood of the engine and is used to reduce friction between moving parts. But what if you have a failed camshaft in a flat tappet engine? Is it the fault of the oil or the camshaft? The problem is caused by the lack of zinc and phosphorus ZDDP levels in today's engine oils. Newer engines are designed to function without as much ZDDP to protect the catalytic converters. To restore ZDDP content back into your classic trucks, tractors, or motorcycles, pick up a bottle of Rizlone's engine oil supplement with zinc treatment. It's good for all 2004 and older gasoline engines and diesel engines from 2006 and before. This tip is brought to you by Rizlone, affordable solutions to expensive automotive repairs. Hey, welcome back to Truck U. Bruno, I've got to give you all the credit in the world because it was about two or three years ago that you turned me on to this product right here. It's the heavy duty hand cleaner and the skin repair from Stoco Products. Man, this Cresto stuff rules. Yeah, this is what I used to call the good stuff. You know, it goes with me on the road. I'm out at the racetrack and my hands are really nasty, dirty. I'll use this so I don't bring the track with me when I go out. Now it's great. It's got these little walnut scrubbers in it. It's going to clean up all the grease and grime and get underneath your nail beds so your hands look good when you leave the track or leave the shop, wherever you might be. Then the good thing is you've got the skin relief to help moisturize and bring those hands back to life. And the chicks dig clean hands. <laughs> yeah, it's the Cresto Extra Heavy Duty Hand Cleaner and Skin Relief from Stoco Products. Here's another product that Bruno and I have used a lot over the last couple of years, and it's been cool to see this evolved. It's the Light Crafters Eyewear from SAS Safety. Now, they've come along with Matt says they've evolved in the fact they now have really bright LEDs on both sides that are adjustable, so you can point the light wherever you need it so you can see where you're looking at. And also, they've got these bifocals on the bottom, so now they've got magnification from one and a half up to three times more, four different levels to allow you to really see those small parts, get in those tight areas, and get your job done and keep your eyes protected all the way along. Yep, and your hands are free. It's very nice. It's a light crafter safety wear from SAS Safety. This is the Purple Power Industrial Strength Cleaner and Degreaser from Aiken Chemical Company. Now, Bruno knows I've got this little Sea Dew jet boat. It's old, about 14, 15 years old, twin engine in the back. You know, the engine compartment was just trashed. It's all oiled and dirty. I hit it with some Purple Power, rinsed it out, and it looks almost as good as new. I mean, it looks as good as it can look. Well, that's because this is a concentrated formula that will quickly penetrate any oil, grease, dirt, dust, and allow it to rinse away in just a matter of seconds. What's great about this stuff, too, is it creates a barrier between the stain and the surface that just got clean. And it's biodegradable, so as you're cleaning and as you're degreasing, you're not creating some kind of biohazardous situation. This is what you need to check out. It's Purple Power from Aiken Chemical Company. So today's award for cool product name goes to these guys. It's the Monkey Spit Thread Locker from Gorilla Tools. Now, Thread Locker is something that can come in really handy, especially if you're a guy like me. I race a turbocharged four-cylinder. Now, these engines have tons of harmonics, so a good thread locker is imperative to make sure you keep that engine together. When you've got those harmonics going on, it doesn't matter how hard you tighten those bolts, what kind of uh, torque spec you've got. If you don't have a good thread locker to keep everything in place at 11,000 RPM, it's going to get ugly. And what's great is they've got three different levels. You have your light, medium, and uh, heavy-duty 
duty to make sure that everything stays where it needs to. It's Monkey Spit from Gorilla Tools. Very cool name, I like it. Hey, we need to go to break. When we come back, we're gonna take the side-by-sides back out to the trail and see what kind of damage we can do, right? I think we might wanna bring this with just in case. That might be a good idea. <laughs> grab a bigger box of that. Yeah, I'll grab a couple, actually. Hold <laughs> on. For more information about anything you've seen on today's show, check out speed.com or visit our website at truckutv.com. Welcome back to Truck U. So here's where we're at on the Commander. We've got a lot of our suspension from FST already in place, but we've got these longer arms in the front and back, so we have to compensate with some other longer pieces. Well, fortunately, FST hooked us up with some longer axles right there, and we've got an upgraded and longer steering component right here. So that's gonna get the job done. You know, Bruno mentioned it a little bit earlier. He said it's like we're building a full-on Baja racing vehicle, and he's pretty much right. Now it's time to put some shoes on it, and we're gonna go with these. It's the Baja Cross tires from ITP. Now ITP has been in business for 30 years so there's a lot of design and a lot of technology that goes into these tires. They're made with a superior rubber compound so these treads right here aren't going to cut and break and go flying off on you. They're going to hold up. Now we have to coordinate the outfit and we're going to do that with these. It's the SS212s also from ITP. Cool thing about the SS212s is they come in a 12 or a 14 inch bead diameter with a variety of offsets and bolt patterns. So no matter what you have for a side by side or a UTV, ITP has got a good looking set of wheels that are ready to go for you. Keep in mind they've all got that clear coat finish on there which makes them easy to clean and don't forget about the lifetime structural warranty. That's good to go as well. So with all this being said, I think the outfit for the Commander is almost ready to go. I just got a little bit more work to do. Man, it's a beautiful day. It's great to be back out here in the sticks playing again. The Razor is rocking. Take a look at the Commander soaking up those jumps. This thing's running a lot smoother with this FST suspension. Yeah, last time we came through that first turn, man, it didn't end well. That thing flipped over on its side and did so way easy. Now with this new suspension, this came kind of squatted, planted on the tire and drove off. Now we're able to use that additional horsepower, so this thing is going to be a beast. All right, Bruno, just on a personal note, you're not going to get all weird and uber competitive or anything again, are you? Hey, dude, if you can't hang with the B-Man, you should have never showed up. All right, let's go. Come on. That's all the time we got for Truck U. We'll catch you next time. Anybody ever tell you you're hard to live with? Just about every day.